that we are on the traditional ancestral unceded territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Slave Two First Nations. So thank you for listening us today. And uh, I'm Amanda Conkin, candidate in Vancouver Point Grey.
chill tone and retech eye prep. She sent me a message today and said, uh, what's happened? I'm getting stopped on the street now and being asked to give her signs in, in 100 Mile House in Williams Lake, which is exciting. You know, today, Jillian would have seen it, Nora, Nora would have seen it. We're down doing a, a press today, like we're looking down at, um, what's the name of that? Yeah, I forget the actual name, Creekside, Creekside Community Center. We're at Creekside Community Center, and we're sitting out there talking, and person after person after person was going by, and this hasn't happened before in Vancouver, saying, hey, hi, go Greens, that kind of, because they recognized, they recognized who I was, and we knew that that was a barrier, is that people didn't know who the people were, they didn't know who I was, and now they're actually beginning to actually take it serious. Look, we just did a, a debate, uh, Jillian and I, with the, um, uh, uh, the board of the Vancouver Sun, and again, very challenging questions. But I hope you know. I think I think it went well, and I hope that they report um, report very good people are taking it seriously. In fact, one of them got very aggressive, and he challenged me and said, "Why should we trust you if you're not willing to name your finance minister, your health minister, your this minister?" And I said, "Because if I did what Mr. Hogan did and pick five five people." I'd throw the other 878 of them under the bus, and I'm not willing to do that. And then it pivoted back to talking about uh, people. You know, it's, it's, I would never have thought this could have happened in four years. Uh, that we could be in a position now to actually, um, you know, it's not a, who knows what's going to happen, but we know that our trend is up, and it's up fast. And I'm excited to see what's going to happen on the Tuesday poll by Main Street Research. We know, for example, um, that we already would win quite a number of seats if there was an election today. And that's before, that's before the actual event that we had two days ago. So who knows where this is going to end up? Because it's certainly, as we know, that people are there with an appetite for change. Can I, we have a, someone else who's just come in. Over the course of the, um, you know, I, I, I am so proud. I'm so proud to be part of a party that has, you know, what I call Greens are basically a bunch of really nice people who want to make the world a better place. We've got these you know, exceptional team of candidates with a shared vision. And you know, it's fun. You, you just want to hang out with our candidates. They're not angry. They don't come into Jerry's office and lose their temper because they, because they see that some signs, you have some signs. They, they, don't, they don't troll people on the internet. Uh, <laughs> which is, uh, although I'm sure some of you are beginning to see your, your name yeah. appear in trolling stations. <laughs> Apparently, I hate teachers, even though I am a teacher. <laughs> I want to build a refinery in Kitimat, even though I've been a climate scientist my entire life, fighting for the, for the introduction of move away from the carbon economy. Apparently, I'm a liberal light. I, 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 so much things, apparently, I am this and that. And it's, you know, that's what we get in a campaign. But, um, you know, we're staying high road. We, uh, we just have to let Mr. Oregon show himself. He loses his temper yet again. And, and we, we realize that he, he's not a leader. Mr. Oregon is not a leader. And people see he's not a leader. And they want this car to go. And that is our opportunity. That's come, come, come um, growing. You know, one of the things that I've been saying, we've all been saying as candidates, is that it's really important for us to reclaim our democracy. Reclaim our democracy so that we can actually put people's interests first. And again, just today, a fellow from the store contacted me and said, you know, I've never thought of voting for you. Never in my life would I thought of voting for you. But I need to help you because for the first time, I've actually heard somebody, a politician, saying the same thing I've been saying. We need to reclaim our democracy. So we're getting support happening in Prince George. And, 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 and that's, you know, again, coming back to evidence-based decision-making. Desperate for it in this BC in this county. And today I had an email from somebody in, in, in camp at Kelowna. But we're surging in support with an outstanding candidate in Alison And what the candidate said there is, she said, he said, I didn't think, I didn't think I would. This is a rural area. He's a hunter who, who you know, is, is just a regular guy um, who, who works, uh, you know, I think he's a laborer. And, and he said, you know, I never thought I'd do this. But I like the message. I like the fact you're talking about evidence. I like the fact that I'm, I'm voting green, and this is in Kelowna. So this excitement is actually um, building um, across the province. That's why I'm heading up Island tomorrow. I'm going to Kelowna and Camelot after that to Nelson Preston because we're surging in many, many places. You know, British Columbians recognize, too, that this growing disparity between those who have and those who haven't needs to stop. And they don't trust the BC Liberals who be putting their corporate donors first and foremost to deal with it. And they don't trust the BC NDP who put their big labor union donors forth to deal with it. Today, um, we visited 
a tent city that was popping up. I don't know whether it's in the news yet, but a new tent city is emerging in, in, in uh, was that in downtown east side, Mount Pleasant, Julian, or was that in, uh, it was in Mount, it is in Mount Pleasant? Because it was, it was near the border, I think. I have got this orange in back to it. And yet another uh, tent city, and you know, the, the commentary there. What, what sort of society are we when we don't actually recognize that so many vulnerable people are falling through the crack? And so crack, since the disparity continues to grow between those who have and those who haven't, that's not a healthy society, which is why, you know, as British Columbians see the growing anxiety about inequality in the years ahead, they're, 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 they're coming to us and saying, help, because we don't trust the other, other part of the departments. You know, over the last 16 years, the BC NDP have had a chance to inspire people. They've had a chance after chance after chance to inspire people with a vision that people can get behind. The best they can come up with is we're going to be better at BC. And as I said, I think three times in the debate, better than really bad is still just bad. Um, you know, it's, it's not inspiring. And so we will hear on the doorstep you will hear from people that a vote for the Green is a vote for the Liberals. Well, the answer to that is simple. Only 45% of British Columbians don't even bother to vote because it's a pop symbol for us. Neither of you inspire me. inspire me. And we also know that, that, that in the last election, the BC Liberals won with less than 25% of registered votes. That's the sad state of our lives. We also know that there's a ton of people who vote NDP, not because they like what they stand for, because they hate the Liberals. And a ton of people vote Liberal, not because they like what they stand for, but they hate the NDP. And they'll never vote opposite. But we are giving, finally, and it's so refreshing to be with such amazing candidates, we're giving British Columbians something to vote for, instead of something to vote um, against. BC Liberals will argue that they change stay the course. You know, I don't know how many of you saw that debate, but, but I, I almost went into a trap. It was like ridiculous. Every answer was jobs, 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 fear money. But, but again, you know, the, the evidence is clear. She has no credibility on Trump. No credibility on the economy. No credibility on jobs. No credibility on doing what's right for people. And no credibility for putting people first and foremost in the decision. You know, our platform, which is being released, is inspiring many. It's inspiring many, and you'll, you're telling me to speak louder? Yeah. It's the end of the day, and I'm getting tired. <laughs> <laughs> our platform is inspiring many, because what we're doing is putting good public policy first and foremost, not political vote buying first and foremost. We are looking at, actually, you look at things like the Surrey Bridge tolls. The NDP want to buy your vote by eliminating them. The BC Liberals want to look like they're buying your votes and get ahead of the NDP by sort of getting rid of them. We recognize that that's an important tool in public policy, to pay for the infrastructure that is built to, without charging those people who are, not, who are not using it. So we don't go down that rabbit hole, cynical rabbit hole. We recognize that affordability is a critical issue. It is the defining issue in Metro Vancouver. It is also now emerging as a defining issue in, in Greater Victoria. When you look at both of the other parties, they have no ideas. They simply have no ideas. Whereas what we have done is built expert teams to develop bottom-up best practice models that exist around the world to put forward an integrated policy that actually it deals with the issue of affordability while at the same time bringing up the social service rates by 50% over four years and coupling it with that with good policy to take children who through no fault out of their own ended up in a situation that led them to be in foster care. And then they age out and they're just there with no leg up. We believe giving them basic income will give them the right start to a life that they never chose but were landed into and born into. You know, we recognize that the living wage, the living wage in, back in Victoria is $21 as of, as of now yesterday. Who knows what it is in Vancouver, but it's certainly higher than $21. So when you campaign on a cynical $15 an hour uh, minimum wage five years in the future, and there's no basis or no evidence as to where you came from, the number from, we can do better. Which is why we're putting together a fair, a, a fair wage commission. A fair wage commission that would determine what the wage should be that the small business could could actually accommodate so that we could actually move towards increasing the minimum wage at the same time as we move towards adopting the, uh, the, 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 the um, basic income policy and working with the federal government. You know, we have momentum is here. We see that British Columbians are rallying behind. We're growing, whether it be in Vancouver Point Grey to Vancouver Hastings, to Vancouver Kensington, I got it right, to Delta North. 
to Berlangera uh, and on and on, Richmond and, and on and on and on. In Parnas. Cochetta. Cochetta. Okay, go ahead. Uh, it's, uh, we, we have such an amazing team of people, we're realtors, we have scientists, we have CEOs of tech companies, community leaders, firefighters, we have small business owners from a diverse array. It's just really exciting. So this, as we move forward, we're about to make history in British Columbia. Here, here. I don't know how big this will be filled in the history books, but it will be there because we're not going to win one seat. We're not going to win two seats. We're not going to win four seats. You know, we're... we're 83. <laughs> politics. Every pundit out there is saying the same thing. This election is unpredictable. The story, the story for the election is us, the BC Greens. We are the story. We, this is before us. Just continue doing what you're doing. Volunteers knocking on doors. It's exciting. And let's see what the next week brings. So thank you very much for being here. And thank you for supporting us. they're running in this election. So you've already been introduced to David Wong, and David is in Vancouver at Hastings. So if that's your riding, we'll talk to David. Nice. <laughs> and Jerry Kroll, whose office uh, is hosting us again in Vancouver, Mount Pleasant. So if you're in Vancouver, Mount Pleasant, you can go talk to Jerry. Uh, we also have Louise Bouton. Is it Bouton or Bouton? Bouton. Bouton. So Louise Bouton in Vancouver Fairview. That's right next to me. So right next to Vancouver Ray.
So while we're all here, I'm collecting buttons for people in Victoria. So if I, if I haven't got your button yet, I need your button. Bradley, nice. You got any other buttons? Oh, I'm taking that one, Bob. Oh, like, yeah. Anyone else have buttons? And this is very strategic. The food is closest to the candidates. So if you want food, you have to come talk to us. Have some food, come talk to us, stick around, grab some food.